Hello and welcome back to another full step-by-step -step PC build. Today I'm going to be building a PC in Fantac's brand new P200A. Now this case comes in two different versions. I've got the DRGB version which gives you two RGB fans at the front and a tempered glass side panel. And you might be forgiven for thinking that this is a micro ATX case given its size, but it actually will only accommodate a mini ITX motherboard. So for the motherboard for today's build, I've gone with MSI's B550i Gaming Edge Wi-Fi. For the CPU, I'm going to be using the Ryzen 7 3700X, which is an 8-core 16-thread CPU. So even though I do have a range of Ryzen 5000 series CPUs I could have used for this build, the big reason I've gone for this one is this is the CPU I've used in all my previous mini ITX builds, and I'm really keen to see how this case performs compared to those. And it should perform well, it can accommodate up to 7 case fans, it's got a mesh front panel and it can take a 280mm radiator. So that's something I'm going to be testing in a separate video. Keeping our CPU cool, I've got a 240mm IIO, it's Bquats Pure Loop. For RAM, I've got 32GB of Trident Z Neo at 3600MHz. For storage, I'm going with a single M.2 SSD for today's build. The drive I've got is from Sabrent, it's their Rocket 4 Plus in 2TB capacity. Even though this is a small case, it will actually accommodate a full-sized ATX power supply. So the power supply I've got for today's build is an 850 watt fully modular power supply from Corsair, the RM850. For the graphics card, I've got NVIDIA's RTX 3060 Ti. And then finally, for case fans, I'm going to be using Lian Lee's Uni fans. So that's all the parts, let's get on with the build. The first thing I like to do in any build is to prepare our case, so we need to remove any panels, dust filters, or anything else that's going to get in our way during the build. So our front tempered glass panel is held on with two pegs at the top. We just need to pull it forward to remove the pegs. There's then little brackets at the bottom holding it on, so if we lift it upwards, it will come away. It's exactly the same process for the other side panel. Pull it away at the back, lift it upwards, and it'll lift away. Looking at the side panel we just removed, you'll notice there's a large vented area, which gives us a clue that we're going to be able to mount a radiator or fans on the other side of this. In the main body of the case, we've got our accessory box. It contains all the fixtures and fittings you're going to need to install your motherboard and your power supply, some cable ties for cable management, and as well, it also contains a bracket you're going to need if you want to mount your graphics card vertically, and I'll show you that later on. So as we've mentioned, at the front of the case, you can fit two 120 or two 140 millimeter fans, at the rear of the case is just a 120mm fan, while at the bottom of the case you can fit two 120mm fans. The other fan mounting location we've got is actually on the side of the case, and we've got these two removable SSD mounting brackets. To remove these, all we need to do is squeeze the little clips at the back, and then the brackets simply pull away. Same thing with the other one. Squeeze the little clips at the back, and then the brackets can simply be removed. On the side of the case, we can fit two 120mm fans, or we can also fit a 240mm radiator, and that's my plan to put a 240mm AIO at the back. On the front of the case, instead of the fans that are there, you can either fit a 240 or 280mm radiator, while at the rear of the case, you can fit a 120mm radiator. Looking at the rear of the case, the first thing I'm noticing is that cable management space looks fairly limited. We do have some Velcro straps here and here, and a little space in here for some cables. The other cable management clips are actually metallic and held on with two thumb screws, so I'll go ahead and remove these. So if you do decide to remove the SSD brackets on the side of the case to make room for fans or radiators, you've still got two further 2.5 inch drive mounts. So we can go ahead and loosen this thumb screw. We've got a little removal bracket behind the motherboard, where you can fit a further two, two and a half inch drives. Looking at the rear of the case, our power supply is actually going to go at the top and we've got a removable bracket here held on with two thumb screws. You're going to fix this bracket to the back of your power supply, slide the whole thing into the back and then secure it with the two thumb screws. So I'm going to go ahead and remove this. Looking at the rear of the case, we can see we've got three horizontal PCI expansion slot covers. I did mention one of the options you have is to mount your graphics card vertically and we just need to reconfigure this back panel. So there's three screws we need to remove, one here, here and here. With the three screws removed, the bottom part of the back panel will simply slide off. 
what we need to do is separate the panel here. Then we can go ahead and join the two panels together again, this time putting this bracket down at the bottom. Then all we need to do is slip this into here and then secure things again with the three screws. In the case accessory box we then get a bracket for the vertical mount. We just need to line this up at the bottom and then we've got two thumb screws which are going to hold the bracket in place. The case doesn't come with the riser cable you're going to need to use your graphics card in a vertical orientation so you're going to have to pick that up separately from Fantax. If you do want to use your graphics card in a vertical orientation you can see you've still got a free space over the bottom right hand side for a bottom intake fan. I'm planning on installing my graphics card in a horizontal orientation. The big reason for that is all the issues with Gen 3 cables and Gen 4 motherboards and graphics cards. So I'm going to go ahead and remove this and put the back panel back to its original configuration. Looking at our cases from I.O., we've got two USB Type-A ports and a single Type-C port. We've got a combined headphone and microphone jack and then we've got two buttons to control the case RGB. One is to change the mode and then the other is to change the colour. And then at the top of the case we've got a power button. To remove the case's front mesh panel all we need to do is pull it forward at the front and then we should be able to lift it away. At the bottom of the case we've got a full length dust filter which can simply be pulled away at the front. You're only going to need to remove this if you plan to install bottom mounted fans. I'm not planning on doing this so I'm going to put this back in. The case comes with two 120mm RGB fans pre-installed at the front, although it will accommodate up to two 140mm fans at the front, and you can install the fans both on the inside as they've been installed here, but also on the outside of the front of the case. Now I'm planning on using the Li and Li Uni fans both on the radiator and for case fans, so I'm going to go ahead and remove these fans. They're held on by four screws at each corner. We're now ready to start work on our motherboard. The first thing to do is install our CPU. So we need to go ahead and open the clip on the socket. This is our CPU. You'll notice I'm holding it by the edges and the reason for that is I don't want to damage these gold pins on the underside of the CPU. The other thing to point out, if you look at the corner at the top of the screen, it has a little gold triangle on it and we're gonna to need to line this up with a marker on the socket. So if you look at our motherboard, you can see there's a white mark on the top left hand corner. So this is the side we're gonna to have to line the gold triangle up with. Okay, so I'm going to lower the CPU into the socket nice and gently, just letting it hover over the socket, and at one point when things are all lined up, it's just going to fall in, like it has done now. It's really important you don't put lots of pressure down on it, where you risk damaging those pins. Now that the CPU is in the socket, to install it, all we need to do is close the lever. Next, we need to go ahead and install the brackets to secure our CPU cooler. They don't use the stock ones, so we need to remove these. Each is held on with two screws. Importantly, don't throw these away, keep them in your motherboard box because you want to change your CPU cooler or sell your motherboard at a later stage, you're going to need these. Okay, so we need to insert a spacer onto each of the corners. Next, we need to put the bracket on. There's two holes on each side. The one labelled AM4 is the one we're going to want to use, so I'll go ahead and put the screws through that. Then lower them down through the spacers. Now what I find, if you give each of the screws just a couple of turns by hand, it makes securing them on that little bit easier, and then we can tighten things up with the screwdriver. And then it's just the same process with the other bracket. Next we can go ahead and install our M.2 SSD. We've got one socket behind this heatsink, and there's also one on the rear of the board, but it's only the one on the front of the board that's gonna support Gen 4 speeds. So this is the one we're going to use. So we just need to remove these two screws. Then we should be able just to slide the heatsink over to the side. We can go ahead and insert our M.2 SSD into the socket at a slight angle and then secure things into place using the screw from the motherboard box. Now importantly I have used this motherboard before. If you're using it for the first time there's often a little bit of plastic protection on the back of the heatsink that you're going to need to remove. Then we can go ahead and slide the heatsink back into place and then secure things into place with the two screws we removed earlier on. We're now ready to install the RAM so we just need to open the clips on the slots. Then we can go ahead and line the RAM up with the slots. 
once we're happy everything is lined up, we just need to apply some firm pressure to the top and the ram is going to clip into place. Same thing with our second stick of ram, we'll go ahead and line things up with the slot. Once we're happy everything is lined up, we just again need to apply some firm pressure to the top and the ram is going to clip into place. We can now go ahead and install our motherboard, so I'm just going to line things up with a cutout at the back of the case. And then we'll secure things into place with four of the screws from the accessory box. Okay, next thing to do is get our case cables plugged in. So I'm going to start off with our HD audio cable which goes into this header down the bottom left hand side of the motherboard. So I'm going to bring it through this cutout at the bottom. Go ahead and line things up with the header and push into place. Next header along is for our front panel connectors. We've only actually got one in this case, it's just the power button. So it's going to go into the top row, pins third and fourth from the left hand side. So again, we'll bring it through the bottom cutout, route the cable up, line things up with a slot and push into place. The next header along is for a USB 2.0 connector. We don't actually have any of these in our case but our Lian Li fan hub for our uni fans is going to need a USB connector. So I'm going to go ahead and plug it in at this stage. So we'll go ahead and bring it through the bottom cutout, line things up with the header, and push into place. And then I'm just going to route the access cable over to the left hand side of the motherboard so it's going to be out of the way of our graphics card. The next cable to plug in is a 3 pin 5 volt ARGB cable coming from our case's RGB hub. Now if you plug this in, it's going to allow your motherboard to control the hub and anything that's plugged into it. The only downside of plugging this in, it means the buttons on the front of the case won't work because motherboard control gets priority over the case buttons at the front of the case. So if you want to use the buttons in the front of the case to control the RGB hub, don't plug this cable in because you're going to lose that feature. For this particular build, I'm not really going to need to plug this in because I'm actually going to use the Lian Li controller to control the fans. And really the only thing I'm going to need to control is the lighting on the power button. I'm actually probably going to use the buttons to control this because my motherboard doesn't actually have any RGB on it. And that will save me having some extra RGB software installed on the computer at a later stage. I will show you how to plug this in in case you want to. So our RGB header is just here. So we just need to line things up, and once we're happy things are lined up, push it into place, and then pull any excess cable through to the back. I'm going to go ahead and leave this unplugged because I would rather use the buttons. Next up we've got our case's USB 3.0 cable, so it's just a matter of lining things up. Once we're happy things are lined up, push it into place, and then pull any excess cable through to the back. Just above that we've got the header for our Type-C cable. Again, line things up, push into place, and then pull any excess cable through to the back. Next thing to do is install our power supply. I've already gone ahead and plugged in the cables we're going to need. So we've got a 24 pin connector, a single 8 pin EPS connector to provide additional power to our CPU. We've got a single PCIe cable which has two 8 pin connectors on it. We're only going to need one of these. And we've also got a SATA cable plugged in because we're going to need SATA power both for our cases RGB hub and also for our Lian Li hub. So all we need to do is secure the cases power supply bracket onto our power supply using four of the screws from the accessory box. Then we can go ahead and feed our power supply cables into the case. Slide our power supply directly in from the back, making sure the power supply's intake fan is facing down into the case. And then going ahead and secure the power supply at the back using the two thumb screws. Our 8-pin EPS cable coming from our power supply is going to go into this header here on the top left hand side of the motherboard. So I'm just going to bring it through this cutout here. So to make things easier to fit through this cutout, I've split our cable into two 4-pin connectors. It does split in half. I'm going to bring it through the cutout, then join the connectors up together again. There we go, that's things joined together. And then I'm going to go ahead and line things up with the socket and get it plugged in. And then we'll go ahead and pull any excess cable through to the back. Next I'm going to go ahead and bring our 24 pin connector through this cutout here, line the cable up with the header and push into place and then again pull the excess cable through to the back. Okay we're now ready to install our IO but as I mentioned earlier on I'm going to use the Lian Li uni fans both on our radiator as well as case fans because these are actually pretty good radiator fans. So the first thing for us to do is to join our two fans together so we go ahead and line them up and then slide them together. 
then we're going to have to add a little connector onto the end. So again, it just slides onto the end here and pushes in. Coming from the two fans, we've got two wires. We've got a RGB connector, which has got to plug into our Lian Li fan hub. And we've also got a standard four pin fan connector, which is going to go into our CPU fan header. Then we can go ahead and set the fans onto the radiator and secure them into place with eight of the long screws that came with our AIO. Looking at the rest of our AIO, we have two additional three pin fan connectors. One of them is coming from our pump, and this is our pump here on the tubes. The other is coming from the water block. This one obviously powers the pump, whereas this one powers the lighting on the water block. Both of these are SATA powered, so all we need to do is plug it into this double SATA adapter that comes with the AIO. So this end is going to plug into the SATA cable coming from our power supply. And as we've already mentioned, one of these is going to plug into our CPU fan header and the other into our Lian Li fan hub. So just realizing because we're going to put our fans on the outside of the case, we're actually going to have to screw them in from the inside. And if we go ahead and install our radiator, we're not going to have access to the holes on this side. So I'm going to go ahead and install the case fans next before putting the radiator in. So I'm just going to put them on here. I'm going to bring these cables in through this cutout, bring them through to the back of the case and then we'll screw them in from the other side. And since we're installing the case fans, we may as well install the rear case fan as well. And then we'll go ahead and feed the cables coming from the fans through to the back. So the four pin PWM cables coming from our uni fans, we've got two options. We can plug them directly into our motherboard or we can plug them into the Lian Li fan hub. I have had some problems getting the motherboards to control the fans when they're plugged into the Lian Li fan hub, so I'm going to go ahead and plug them directly into the motherboard. So our rear fan I'm going to plug into our system fan header, which is down here. So we'll go ahead and bring the cable through the cutout, line it up with the header, and push into place. And then we can pull the access cable through to the back. We've only got two other fan headers on our motherboard. We've got our CPU fan header and our pump fan header. Now, we're not going to use the pump fan header because our pump actually will run off SATA power. So I'm going to go ahead and plug our front fans into our pump fan header. So we'll go ahead and bring it through the cutout, line it up, and push into place. Next, we can go ahead and insert our radiator in at the side. Then we can go ahead and secure the radiator into place using the short radiator screws that came with the AIO. Next, I'm going to go ahead and bring the 4-pin fan connector coming from the cables on the radiator through this cutout and plug it into our CPU fan header and then pull the excess cable through to the back. Next, we need to apply some thermal paste to your CPU. My preferred method is applying a pea-sized amount to the middle of the CPU. Then we can go ahead and line the water block up with the brackets we installed earlier on. Once we're happy everything is lined up, we can just tighten up the two screws. Then I'm going to go ahead and feed the two 3-pin fan connectors, one coming from the pump and then the other coming from the water block through to the back of the case. We can then go ahead and plug these connectors into our double SATA splitter cable. And then we can go ahead and plug the other end into our SATA power supply cable. The other cable that's going to need to go into our SATA power supply cable is the SATA cable coming from our case's front I.O. which is going to power our case's ARGB hub. The next thing for us to do is to go ahead and get everything plugged into our Lian Li fan controller. So it's got four channels, one, two, three, and four. And into each of the channels, there's two wires to plug in. And that is the wires coming from each of the groups of the Lian Li Uni fans. So one is the four pin fan connector. The other is the ARGB connector. Now I've already plugged the four pin fan connectors directly into the motherboard, so I can go ahead and skip that step. But what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna plug the RGB connectors into channels one, two, and three. On the other side of the hub, we've got three further connectors. One of them is for a SATA power cable, so I'm going to go ahead and plug that in. And then I'm going to go ahead and plug the other end into the SATA power cable coming from our power supply. 
Now you remember earlier on we plugged a USB cable into our motherboard, so it goes into the middle connector. And then the third connector is for a PWM connector going from the hub to the motherboard. We're not going to need this because we have plugged our PWM fans rather than plugging them into the hub directly into the motherboard. Because I find whenever you plug this into the motherboard, the motherboard didn't actually control the speed of the fans. So that's the hub fully set up. We're now ready to install our graphics card, so we're going to need to remove the top two expansion slot covers. To prepare the motherboard to receive the graphics card, we just need to open the clip. Then we can go ahead and line our graphics card up with the slot. Now one problem I'm having with installing the graphics card, it isn't fitting because of the cable that plugs into the Lian Li Uni fans. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to try and turn this round so the cable is coming into the top of the fans and then try the graphics card again. Okay, we can now go ahead and try the graphics card again. So we'll go ahead and line things up with the slot. There's a little clip here where we hold the next fan on and the graphics card is just catching on it. And there's no way to move the radiator actually any higher up. So I've taken the fan off again, removed this little bit of plastic clip and hopefully now our graphics card is going to fit. So let's have a go, we'll line things up. Yeah, we're lined up nicely with the slot and we can go ahead and push into place. And you can see the clip has now closed. So I think if you're following this build at home, be aware that you are actually gonna to have to cut a bit off your uni fan and as well, you're actually under quite a bit of pressure at the top where the other cable is. So this probably isn't the best solution um, you could, of course, just put your radiator on the front and leave the little plastic SSD covers on the side. Then we can go ahead and secure the graphics card into place using the thumb screws we removed earlier on. Then we can go ahead and bring our PCIe cable through one of the cutouts at the bottom of the case. Then we can go ahead and plug the cable into the 8 to 12 pin adapter that came with our graphics card. And then go ahead and plug the other end into our graphics card. Final thing to do is some cable management. We need to make this mess of cables disappear so we can get our panel back on. Again, we have plenty of space up here. This is where I'm going to put our Lian Li hub and any excess cables. We've got our metal cable brackets, which are going to help hold the cables out of the way. And we've also got some cable ties. So that's the build complete, and I think you'll agree it looks absolutely stunning. I took a bit of a gamble with the white Lian Li Uni fans, using them in the black case. Not something I've done before, wasn't sure if it would work. I've only used it in the white case and been really impressed with them. But actually, I think when you combine it with the silver on the AIO, the silver on the graphics card, the lighting all set to white, I think it works really well. And I think I've got everything just perfect, just the way I would want it. So I've gone ahead and set the PC up. I haven't recorded these steps because I've done that previously with the same motherboard in my Sugo 15 build. So if you need to know how to set up Windows, install all the drivers, you're gonna find that in that video and you'll find a link to it in the description. Likewise, if you don't know how to set up the Lian Li Uni fans, I've covered that in my PCO11 Dynamic Mini build. And again, you'll find a link to that in the description. 
I think probably the main key point that you're going to want to do whenever I first set the PC up, the fans were spinning quite noisily, particularly the ones that were plugged in to our pump header. So you are going to want to go into the BIOS, you're going to want to change that to PWM and use the smart fan mode and then match the fan curves to your other system fan header. So you have all your system fans spinning at the same speed. And that's really the only key step that I haven't actually recorded that you won't get from all the other videos. I think another really key point I would make is I would probably recommend staying away from cable extensions. I did have a white 24 pin cable extension. I was thinking about sneaking in and was actually glad I didn't at the end because I just about managed to get the back panel on. And I think with the cable extensions, I wouldn't have had any chance. I think if you're going to go for white cables, and I think white cables would look very well in this build, you would need custom cables rather than cable extensions because space at the back of the case is actually quite limited. So next thing for me is to do a lot of detailed thermal testing. I'm going to try the graphics card in a vertical orientation. I'm going to try fans below the GPU, moving the radiator to the front. I might even try an air killer. And I'm going to try and work out what is the best cooling configuration for this case. So if you are thinking of building in the case, it's probably worth checking out that video before you do. And once it's made, you'll find a link to it in this video's description. So I think that's everything for now. The only thing to say is if you've enjoyed the video, please remember to give it a thumbs up. And if you're not currently subscribed to the channel, please hit the subscribe button as well. Both those things really help me. They help the channel grow. And I'll really appreciate it. Thanks for watching.